Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To carry on with the lower limb lectures, I'm gonna cover in this presentation the anatomy of the gluteal region. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. First, uh, let's revise some body features at this region. And then I'm gonna talk about the muscles of the gluteal region. They include the glutei muscles, both gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus, also the tensor fascia lata, and the short lateral rotators. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the greater and lesser sciatic foramina, including their boundaries and contents. This is a picture of the right hip bone we can see three gluteal lines on the lateral surface of the ilium we have the inferior the middle and the posterior gluteal line they divide the lateral surface of the ilium into three regions also we have this area which extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the iliac tubercle on the iliac crest and if you remember this is the ischial tuberosity and this will be the lateral surface of the ischial tuberosity. Posteriorly, we have the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch, and they are separated from each other by the ischial spine. Here is the upper end of the right femur, seen from the anterior aspect, and we can see a large trochanter on the lateral side of the femur. It's called the greater trochanter. This is its lateral surface. And this is the anterior surface of the greater trochanter. If we rotate the femur and look at its back, again, this is the lateral surface of the greater trochanter. This is the superior surface of the greater trochanter. And this is the medial surface of it. And this is the posterior surface of the greater trochanter. Below it lies the gluteal tuberosity. This picture shows the articulated pelvis and the hip joint. We can see here the lateral surface of the ilium, the ischial tuberosity, the greater trochanter, the back of the sacrum, the sacrotuberous ligament, and the sacrospinous ligament. Now the greater sciatic notch in the articulated pelvis transform into greater sciatic form. Below it lies the lesser sciatic form. For the muscles of the lower limb, we have the superficial layer formed of two muscles, the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia lata. Both insert into this part of the D fascia, which is a thick band on the lateral surface of the thigh extending from the ilium to the tibia. We call it the iliotibial tract. In a deeper plane, lies the gluteus medius muscle so if we remove the gluteus maximus from the view and also the gluteus medius we can see a deeper muscle which is the gluteus minimus deep to it lies the muscles which lie very close to the hip joint we have here the pyriformis the obturator internus and the superior and the inferior gemelli. Below it lies the quadratus femoris muscle, and in a deeper plane lies the obturator externus muscle, but it is not shown here in this view. We also can divide the gluteal region muscles according to their function. So we have the main extensor of the hip, which is the gluteus maximus muscle. The abductors and medial rotators of the hip, including the gluteus medius and minimus, and the short lateral rotators of the hip joint, including the pyriformis, the obturator internus, the obturator externus, the superior and the inferior gemelli, and the quadratus femoris muscle. The origin of the gluteus maximus muscle from the outer surface of the ilium behind the posterior gluteal line from the back of the sacrum and coccyx, and also from the sacrotuberous ligament. It moves downward and laterally and inserts into the iliotibial tract through its most uh, superficial part, while its deeper part inserts into the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. 
The nerve supply of the gluteus maximus muscle is through the inferior gluteal nerve and it does not supply any other muscle but it. Regarding the action of the gluteus maximus, it's a very powerful muscle that helps in hip extension. Actually, it is the main extensor of the hip joint, especially in the extreme movement as in climbing upstairs or running. Also, it is a powerful lateral rotator of the hip. And through its insertion into the iliotibial tract, it maintains the extended position of the knee joint. For the hip abductors and the medial rotators, let's revise the gluteus maximus again. As we can see here, it takes origin from the back of the ilium, sacrum, coccyx, and sacrotuberous ligament, and its deeper part inserts into the gluteal tuberosity of the femur while its superficial part inserts into the iliotibial tract. The tensor fascia lata extends from the iliac crest to the iliotibial tract. In a deeper plane lies the gluteus medius muscle extends from the lateral surface of the ilium to the greater trochanter of the femur. Deep to it lies the gluteus minimus muscle which extends from the lateral surface of the ilium again to the greater trochanter of the femur. So the origin of the hip abductors or the glutei muscle from the outer surface of the ilium while the tensor fascia lata from the iliac crest they insert into the following regions the glutei into the greater trochanter of the femur either on its lateral surface as in gluteus medius or on its uh, anterior surface as in gluteus minimus, while the tensor fascia lata inserts into the iliotibial tract. The nerve supply of these three muscles is through the superior gluteal nerve. As you can see here, it passes between the gluteus medius and minimus and then terminates at the tensor fascia lata. The action of the abductors and medial rotators of the hip, the glutei abducts the thigh at the hip joint and also prevent tilt of the pelvis on the side of the unsupported leg during walking, as we can see in this animation. So when you stand on one leg, your pelvis tilts to the unsupported side so by contraction of the gluteus medius and minimus, they correct the position of the pelvis one more time. So this helps in walking. The tensor fascia lata assists the gluteus maximus in extending the knee joint through their insertion into the iliotibial tract. For the short lateral rotators of the head joint, first we have the pyriformis. It takes origin from the anterior surface of the sacrum to the upper border of the greater trochanter of the femur. Its nerve supply through the first and the second sacral nerves. Then below it lies the obturator internus, which arises from the inner surface of the obturator membrane and extends to the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. It takes its nerve supply from the sacral plexus. Around the obturator internus muscle tendon, we have the two gemelli, the superior gemellus and the inferior gemellus. The superior gemellus takes origin from the spine of the ischia to the medial surface of the greater to contour of the femur, while the inferior gemellus takes origin from the ischial tuberosity to the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. The nerve supply derived from the surrounding nerves, so the superior gemellus takes nerve supply from nerve to obturator internus, while the nerve supply of the inferior gemellus from the nerve that supplies the quadratus femoris muscle called nerve to quadratus femoris. Then we have the quadratus femoris muscle and as its name indicates, it is quadrangular in shape. Extends from the lateral surface of the ischial tuberosity to the quadrate tubercle on the back of the femur. 
Its nerve supply from the sacral plexus through a nerve called the nerve to quadratus femoris muscle. The last uh, muscle we're going to study now is the obturator external muscle, and I already talked about it at the adductor groove muscles. It takes origin from the outer surface of the obturator membrane and the pubic and ischemi and inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter of the femur. It passes behind the neck of the femur and is closely adherent to it. It's innervated by the obturator nerve. To summarize the action of the lateral rotators of the hip joint, they stabilize the hip joint because they lie close uh, to the hip joint from all aspects and as their name implies uh, they laterally rotate the thigh especially during abduction for the greater sciatic foramen it is bounded by the greater sciatic notch the sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrospinous ligament. It contains a muscle called pyriformis muscle. Above it lies some nerve and vessels, and below it lies some nerve and vessels. So the contents of the greater cytic foramen again is the pyriformis muscle. Above it lies the superior gluteal nerve and vessels, and below it lies the inferior gluteal nerve and vessels. The biggest structure that passes below the pyriformis is the sciatic nerve. Actually, it is the largest nerve in our body. And we also have a cutaneous nerve called the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. And deep to them lies the nerve that supplies the quadratus femoris muscle. Then we have three structures that pass from the greater sciatic uh, foramen to the lesser sciatic foramen. We have nerve to obturator internus pudendal nerve and internal pudendal visit. For the lesser sciatic again, its boundary is the following. It is bounded by the lesser sciatic notch, the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. It contains, beside the obturator internus tendon, the structures that pass from the greater to the lesser sciatic foramen. So we have nerve to obturator internus, Pudendal nerve and pudendal vessels. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.